what a tremendous experience you've had being involved in the ethics rules that apply to lawyers. I understand that you now also work with judicial ethics as well. Well, I do now, and I have uh, since 1992 when the Illinois Judicial Ethics Committee was created. Uh, that was The committee was really the brainchild of, uh, of the late Judge uh, Harold Sullivan, who was really a visionary in this regard. And Judge Sel Sullivan recognized that there really was no place for judges in Illinois to go if they had ethics questions, questions about how to ensure that what they do comports with their responsibilities under the Illinois Code of Judicial Conduct. That was the genesis behind the creation of the IJEC, the Illinois Judicial Ethics Committee, which is a joint committee of the uh, Illinois Judges Association, the Illinois State Bar Association, and the Chicago Bar Association. I've had the privilege of serving on the IJEC since its creation in 1992, and I've had the privilege of chairing the committee now for the past well, more than a year. During the course of uh, my service on the IJC, well, let, let me tell you about what the IJC does. The IJC's primary function is what I alluded to earlier, to uh, answer judges' ethical inquiries. So we field calls from judges who want to make sure that they respond to a particular situation in a way which is consistent with their ethical obligations. Uh, we give them confidential, anonymous advice. And we try to do it quickly. Uh, and then in situations that are of general interest, we write uh, opinions that are published. And they're available in Lexis and Westlaw and the like. Uh, and we've been doing that now. We've issued almost 200 opinions over the past 20 plus years. So uh, I feel like uh, Judge Sullivan's vision for the committee has been realized. The judges now realize that they do have place to go to try to get some guidance to make, because my experience is that judges want to do the right thing. Uh, so part of the issue is sensitizing them to situations that create issues. It's not always self-evident. The Code of Judicial Conduct contains prophylactic rules that goes beyond situations where there's actual misconduct and they're intended to prevent even the appearance of impropriety uh, or you know, not let judges get close to the line. So it takes a certain sensitivity to what the rules say because it's not necessarily intuitively obvious. So we've tried to do our part to educate judges about just that, when they should be aware that the ethical rules are implicated. And then we've tried to make sure that judges are aware that we are a resource to help them. One of our current projects on behalf of the IJEC uh, parallels what uh, I previously alluded to uh, on behalf of both the Chicago Bar and then the Supreme Court Committee on Professional Responsibility. Uh, our ethics rules for judges in Illinois, many of us think, should be updated. We have kind of a hodgepodge of ethics rules. Some of them are from the 1972 ABA Model Code of Judicial Conduct. Some of them are from the 1990 ABA Code. None of them are from the 2007 ABA Model Code. So the IJC, with the assistance uh, uh, very capable of assistance of Professor Kevin Hopkins from John Marshall Law School has been carefully going over the latest version of the ABA Model Code of Judicial Conduct and we are preparing recommendations for the Illinois Supreme Court for adoption of a new Code of Judicial Conduct just as I was previously involved in the development of new rules of professional conduct for lawyers. So we've been working on it for several years now. We probably have about one more year fingers crossed, before we get it to the court for its consideration.